Hey, what's up? This is Ill Factor from BeatAcademy.com. I'm going to share some music production tips and techniques while recreating the beat in Tame Impala's Is It True? Now, the reason why I chose this one, because there's a lot of cool nuances in the drums, and there's a synth sound at the end of the video, particularly that I love creating. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so let's check out the finished product. All right, so let's start by focusing in on the drums. So we're gonna start with an acoustic drum kit. And now Tame Impala is notorious for using a vintage dry sounding kit. So I'm gonna use Excellent Audio's Addictive Drums 2 and actually use the vintage dry drum kit that comes with this. So I'm gonna stay with the, the first selection here, the first preset, and let's go ahead and take a listen to the drum pattern. Now getting the right feel is just as important as finding the right sound. So here with the notes that we have for the drums, I wanna make sure that the snare drum is a little behind the grid, a little behind the beat. And the same thing for the second one here, I'm gonna nudge it a little bit ahead. That's just giving it more of a humanistic vibe and feel. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the clap, make sure that it's not directly on it, maybe a little bit ahead of that first snare and maybe behind that. And as you can see here, we have a, um, a darker shade of purple and a lighter shade of purple here. That's because the velocity of each hi-hat is going to be different. So just by holding the command key, you can click on that note and adjust it up or down. And as you can see, the higher the velocity, the louder the response of that hi-hat. So I wanna accent the first hi-hat and I wanna go ahead and lower the velocity on the second one. So it kind of feels like a ghost note for that hi-hat. Now heading over here to the edit, in the Addictive Drums 2, we're going to route the claps to a separate output. So I'm gonna hit flex, Flexi 1, that's where the clap sound is, and we're gonna choose this button down here, and instead of going through the master output of this plugin, let's go a separate output post fader. And now, we won't hear the clap until we create an audio track and route the input of this plugin into it. So let's go ahead here and hit Command T, create an audio track, and now we're gonna go external input and from the input is coming from Addictive Drums 2. And now we're gonna determine where from Addictive Drums 2 and we're gonna say Flexi 1. And be sure to hit the input monitoring so you can hear this without having to hit the record enable button. All right, so let's wet that clap with some reverb. So let's click the reverb from the audio effects folder and drag that directly onto the clap. And maybe just a little bit less. Now, a great way to add some life to the actual sound of the drums and give it some body and texture would be some harmonic distortion. And one plugin I love using to get that result is Ableton Live's Overdrive. It's really my go-to plugin anytime I'm using acoustic drums because I just love the texture it gives. Listen to it just default. It's like night and day. Here it is without it. it does a great job of immediately just transforming the sound. So let's go ahead and change some of the parameters here. I wanna take all the dynamics off, maybe lower the dry and wet amount, maybe just keep it right around here, and give a little bit more drive and, and warm it up by lowering the tone. And I'm gonna add some compression. One of my favorite go-tos would be the DBX160. And Waves makes this, so, so does uh, UA, UAD Audio. So I'm gonna be using the UAD audio one right here. And we're gonna lower the compression amount and let's just check this out. And now let's go ahead and use an EQ to cover up some frequencies and get the body right here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the high end off and that's always gonna make things sound a lot warmer and that's a big plus with uh, this type of sound. And then I'll go ahead and maybe scoop some of the low mid here, but let's just tweak as we listen. That's probably the best way to do this. All right, now I wanna reinforce this drum kit with a nice beefy kick. So I've got a kick loaded here in a simpler on a separate MIDI track. 
and it's just simply going to be playing the four on the floor. It's mirroring the same exact kick drum pattern from the acoustic drum kit, and let's go ahead and play them together. This is without it. And now that percussion loop that we can hear, uh, we've got some congas that we're gonna uh, go ahead and use. So I have a conga loop here. Let's take a listen. And what I'm gonna do is just shift this over to my arrangement window just by clicking and dragging. And we're going to create a pattern just to, to follow as close as possible as to the reference. And so that's what we have going on here. It's more or less around that pattern. And then what I'll do is go ahead and let's give this some reverb. So I'm gonna put a reverb directly onto this, just similar to what we did with the snare drum. And let's just solo this really quickly. Not too much decay time, just a little bit of some, some room presence in there. And it will warm this up with an EQ. So I'll take some of the bottom end and then some of the high end away. And similar to what we've done, we'll add a little bit of overdrive. Just all the dynamics down and lessen the drive. I'm actually gonna put the overdrive before the EQ. And then we'll put a compressor after that. And we're gonna sidechain this. So we'll go hit sidechain and hit the ill kick because the kick drum is gonna be the source of our sidechain. And it's gonna give a little bit of ducking here. And now let's put this all together. So now let's go ahead and layer the drums that we have with a breakbeat. I love doing this because the nuances that breakbeats give it just adds a little bit grit and texture to the overall drums. So here's the actual loop. I just want this section here, so I'll just loop that. And then we're gonna use a gate so that we can only hear the loop when a certain sound, and I'm side chaining the gate. So every time the kick plays, that's when we hear the loop. I'm just messing around with the hold and release parameters so that we can hear the loop come on and off. And an EQ. And side chain with the kick. Just slightly. Let's see what that sounds like with everybody. And we're almost there with the drums. Now I'm gonna group all these drum tracks that we have, uh, group them together so that we can process them all together. This is what's really gonna help glue them together and feel like one cohesive drum kit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use our RC20 plugin by Exline Audio as well. And we're using this to add some noise, texture, a little bit more grit to this, help shape the tone and add some extra width. So I'm gonna turn this on. So I'm just giving about maybe 47% of the effect of retro color onto these drums. I'm just using it to kind of warm and place a blanket over them, so to speak. Now we have the drum bus, which is gonna do a lot of the work. So here we're adding some drive, crunch, and a little bit of punch with the transients. I'm using the subharmonic uh, boom knob here to really beef up that lower end. So this is without it. night and day. And then I'm gonna use a uh, Fairchild replica by Slate Digital here. It's one of my favorite um, drum bus compressors. I love using this compressor on my drum bus because I, I like the way it captures the transients overall. It just kind of really smooths this out. So here, here's what we have with it on. So taking about maybe four dB of gain and I'm just giving it maybe 1.8 back. I'm high passing it. So anything from 68 to below isn't going through the compressor. It's just gonna not compress that as well. And just a somewhat of a slow attack and not 
all, not the release all the way, but slightly. And just kind of messing around with this till I get the tone and, and the sound that I'm looking for. You can hear the highs of the clap a lot more present with this compressor on. And then an EQ after that, just to brighten this up. Now, why brighten it if the whole purpose was warming this up? Well, with everything on there, I could use this EQ to just brighten the whole package together. And it, it gives a nice little sizzle at the end. Now for the bass, we're gonna be using Moto Bass. You guessed it. And Tame Impala loves using this violin bass. So that's the one I'm gonna be choosing. And going through this, just making a couple alterations here, uh, bringing up the muting, um, changing the strings to flat wound, and just a couple of little preferences here. So let's go ahead and play the riff. Now it's important that that note has that pitch bend. So I'm gonna to go to my envelope window here, go to the MIDI controller, choose pitch bend, and at that note, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down, just automate that so we have a nice slide in that end note. All right, so once I have that down, let's go ahead and use the overdrive plugin to just really brighten up the mid-range. And now I'm gonna use an EQ, using the fab filter here, to just take away some of the high end and carve out some of that low mid. And accentuate this around 800 and 900 hertz here. You get a lot of the tone of the bass here. And then let's just side chain this to the kick drum, just slightly. Let's see what this sounds like together. Now, when focusing on the stabs that I can hear throughout the song, it comes across as a toy organ. Now, immediately my mind is going, okay, Tame Impala, very vintage type sounds, got that indie pop sound. And so in my mind, I'm narrowing it down to, well, probably like a vintage organ type of instrument. So immediately I head over to the Far Fizza. So I'm using the Far Fizza plugin by Arturia to kind of etch out the sound that I'm looking for. So here is the progression. And then in the actual preset here, we're just using the 16 bar and using the brass and no other instrument. And the way this works is that you can enable these and this will enable all the instruments with that same number. So eight, that's a higher octave. I want an, another octave on top of that. So we don't need those two octaves. We'll just leave it at 16. And I'm going to enable the reverb. And so this is the reverb section here. And then what we want to do is use some delay. So I'll head over here to the audio effects folder, user echo. And what's great is I'm going to take it off the sync mode and use the time here. I'm going to narrow down until I find the right pocket, the right rhythm that this delay is going to create. But before I do that, I want to make sure I right click on the dry and wet and choose equal loudness. And this is going to balance out the, 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 the level of the dry signal along with the wet signal as well. So once I do that, now we can adjust the time. That seems like a good spot there. It's got that rhythm that I'm looking for and then I can just filter this out here. And let's use a filter to warm this up a little bit. And essentially the filter is just a one band EQ that's eliminating all the high end. So let's just make this warmer. And let's add some drive on this, some filter drive. So give it a little bit of crunch. And I'll take the same compressor that I have here, the side chain, and put that as well on the Farfisa. Let's check it out. And 
next would be a guitar part. So just grab the guitar that I had nearby, plugged it in and started recording. Now, I'm not the greatest guitar player. So what I like to do is often just maybe play one chord over and over or different chords or maybe chords that might be difficult to, to kind of play. Just play them over and I can kind of piece them together here and have that one performance. And so I'm gonna use the guitar rig and I have the AC box preset. And we're gonna shape it up with a little bit of EQing and a reverb directly on there to give it some space. And just some compression to control the dynamics. And the chorus will give a nice little widening up here. Now let's see what that's like with everybody else. All right, next, let's go ahead and focus on the synth sound that we can hear uh, in some of the choruses. I love the sound. Actually, when I first heard it on this No Doubt record called I'm Just a Girl, um, it's at the very intro of that song. I was like, oh, what a cool sound. So I love creating it, and it's one of my favorite synth sounds. So for this, we're going to use the analog here in Ableton Live, instrument folder, choose analog. And this can be done with any two or more oscillator synth to follow along in your DAW. We're going to go ahead and start by focusing on oscillator one. Now, the waveform we're going to choose is a square wave. We're going to start with that, and we're going to focus our attention here in this section. First, let's go from sub in the mode to sync. We want to set it over to sync because it's basically going to restart the oscillator within itself. Um, and now what we want to do is head over here to the pulse width as well and set that to 100%. Now let's go ahead and play it. And now what we need to do is just dial up the ratio. So right around here sounds pretty good. And then what we can do is determine the pitch envelope in it, the initial pitch envelope. So uh, let's start over here and let's dial something stream, maybe like around 71. And we can determine the time, basically how long it takes for that pitch to go from up all the way down. So I'll extend this out to maybe around 60, something like that. Let's hear what that sounds like. And we get that cool sound. So now I'll go ahead over here to the frequency, maybe lower that down a little bit and shape this so that we have just a little bit, to bring the sustain down and raise the decay a little bit. And now let's listen to the actual part. So it's a little high. Let's go an octave lower by going to the semitone section here and giving it um, 12 semitones. Or you can just go an octave lower, same thing. Now, to stop any overlaps to happen, we'll head over to the volume section and go from eight voice polyphony to mono. And then we can go ahead and lower the release a little bit because we want the note to end once, uh, we want the sound to end once the note finishes playing. Maybe just a little bit more. All right, it's cool there. Now let's add some overdrive to this. And then to make it extra wide, chorus plugin would be great. So let's drag and drop the chorus right after that. And then warm it up by using a filter right after that too. And we can add some filter drive. Why not? Okay. Now, something to keep in mind is you can always tamper around with the pitch envelope time. So depending on this time here, it'll determine how quick or how high that first initial note, the envelope, the pitch envelope, will uh, affect the actual performance. So that's all going to be personal preference, but I kind of like where it's at now, so we'll leave it alone. So let's go ahead and listen to everything together. Well, 
hey, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful, encouraging, and inspiring in any way. And as a gift to you for watching this video, I'd love to give you the Ableton Live set as well as the stems for this project. And you can find that just by clicking the link below in the description box, or you can visit www.beatacademy.com slash pack. You can download this as well as all the other packs that I've put together from other previous breakdown videos that you might have seen on this channel. And so if you haven't seen those videos already, or you're not subscribed to this channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and all that craziness so you can stay up to date with upcoming videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.